right, so I want to jump right in. Um, again, uh, I'm Aleem. This is the Urban Sanyasi channel. Uh, and this series uh, is called Over Troubled Water, um, where I explore uh, some esoteric and occult concepts, uh, particularly from the Vedic tradition. And it is also uh, an opportunity for me to incorporate other learnings um, from other traditions. Um, because I am a lifelong seeker, uh, 36 years old at the time, I, um, am really, uh, you know, have been graced with the ability to see, uh, across cultural lines. And I must say, um, through all of my studies and various, um, religions, um, spiritual ideas, et cetera, um, I must say that. Uh, I, I have always been drawn to Hinduism um, since uh, I would say about the mid 2000s um, and I have been introduced to a number of different concepts and uh, I really feel like at the time I, I wasn't quite ready to go there and so um, I got uh, what I would term as more of a um, uh, the milk before the meat <laughs> Uh, so to speak, and really dove into Christianity, um, and then uh, more of like Hebraic roots and things of that nature. Uh, and I've always really been interested in breaking things down. Um, and so it, it's very uh, natural for me in my path to want to look for uh, the more hidden things. And so, um, you know, over the past several years, I've uh, been reintroduced to hinduism on my own accord I, I haven't been converted or any of that but it's just a very natural um drawing for me uh towards uh these teachings and uh specifically uh the vedas and so <clears throat> today i want to talk about um this uh this series um Again, the, the first one is uh, the mother goddess energy. And tonight we'll be discussing the cave of Brahman. And so um, this is uh, this is maybe multiple parts. I'm not sure yet, but I uh, came across some information and a while ago uh, and many of you may have heard of it. The sacred secretion, which is um, uh, the chrism which is also known as the Christ. And so we'll dig into more about that. But uh, I, I began to notice um, in my understanding of uh, puja and the sacrificial fire and things of that nature, that there was a lot of connection. And I wanted to um, kind of put that together. So uh, inevitably, I started a Google Doc. And that was the point in which I said, you know, I'm going to I'm going to try to make this make sense as much as I can. And I'll start by saying that um, I actually didn't, this initially was not even on my radar. I had done some studies about um, the sacred secretion. I have a book called The Sacred Secretion. I've uh, watched many a Santos Bonacci videos and so um, was very acclimated with this concept um, of this uh, sacred oil uh, rising from the Muladhara's chakra through all the other chakras um, and then being basically ignited in the Sahasrara or the crown chakra. And then that being, you know, the emerging forth of uh, of higher consciousness. And so, um, you know, through my various studies of Kundalini awakening um, and again, San Santos Bonacci and uh, astro theology, et cetera, I, I gained an understanding. But this was something different because I initially, uh, again, wasn't on the path seeking out this particular information, but I came across uh, in my etymological studies a video um, and the speaker or the teacher was uh, basically, you know, breaking down various words and saying why it's really important to know whether or not a thing is a noun or a verb or whatever. Right. And so uh, this idea that he brought forth was God is a verb. Right. And so that really struck me. And I sat with it for a couple of days because it was it just felt like, um, yeah, something had just been ignited in me that and I wanted to go further with it. And so this idea of God as a verb rather than a noun 
um, really, uh, really, um, for me, transforms what our conceptions, right, of God is. And so, you know, we know that the Shiva energy is this passive, like ever meditating, contemplating energy, the potential. And we know that the Shakti energy is what really ignites um, and is the subjective energy, right, that ignites uh, Maya into play and really the, the playfulness of what we see and experience in this reality. And so uh, without Shakti, you know, none of this really comes to be. Um, but also the creative energy that flows forth. So thinking about it as a verb, right, this creative energy that lives within all of us, uh, this pure consciousness um, and how it's activated is uh, what we're going to take a look at today. So I'll go over some etymology uh, around um, the word God and so how we arrive to uh, its meaning, which is uh, invocation or to invoke, which is very interesting when you start to break it down. Um, and we'll start to uh, uh, dive into the cra the cave of Brahman and what that means uh, as we get further. So let's begin. Um, so God is a verb invocation. And I want I, I wanted to capture kind of the fullness of it. So I didn't just bring forth the Sanskrit. I also went into the old English etymology as well. So old English God meaning supreme being deity, the Christian God image of a god godlike person um from from proto-germanic uh guthan uh source also of old saxon old frisian dutch god old high german got german got old norse good um gothic gu and i, I don't speak any of these languages so it, please forgive me if uh i'm messing this up but uh which is of uncertain origin perhaps from the proto-indo European, that's what PIE stands for, Gut, which means that which is invoked, also of Old Church Slavonic Zovo to call. All right, and then we get into the Sanskrit, uh, which is where I find the most interest. Um, Huta, which is invoked, an epithet of Indra, um, from the root Gya, um, to call or invoke. Okay, so right away we see if we really break down the etymology, to call or to invoke um, is an action, right? A call is an action, to invoke is an action. And so, again, this idea of um, what is being invoked within us when we say God even um, is this supreme being, this deity, uh, this energy. And so... Uh, this creative force, right, uh, being an action verb. So, um, and then huta, uh, the thing sacrificed in oblation, um, one of the five uh, sacrificial fires, um, pancha yagna. Uh, and so, let's move on. Uh, we'll keep going here. So, gut um, means pit, shallow hole, indentation, uh, also an adjective. Gut, a uh, bowl or concave, shaped. In Sanskrit, huta, burning. Um, this is from the Sri Ram Bhagavatam. Um, huta, sacrifice in the fire. Huta, being sac being offered oblations. Sorry. Um, and so the root meaning of the name from the Gothic root, gya, um, Sanskrit, hup or imu, to invoke or to sacrifice is either the one invoked or the one sacrificed to. So there is also a noun there um, talking about uh you know the the bhagwan right the the one to to be worshipped or sacrificed to uh from the different indo-germanic roots um to shine to give light uh and to implore and then comes the indo-iranian deva or sanskrit dios or um divas right and so or devas and so yeah we I, let me back up a little bit because uh, I, I feel like I'm moving kind of fast, but effectively, um, the reason I wanted to talk about this particular thing, and I'll, and I'll go to the next slide just to get an idea where I'm coming from. So um, I think it's really important to um, understand, right, um, uh, what I'll mention here in a second. Um, so this root word, gil, comes from gi. And we know that ghee is um, clarified butter, if you didn't know that. And so, um, and let me see if I can pull this up really quick. Um, so, uh, 
so um so gil is linked to the vedic gi which was the libation poured in a chuta or the sacrificial fire which you see to the right second the word gi itself in the uh proto-indo-european gil are derivations of um ancient sanskrit grita which together appear in combination words such as gritahuti Girtahuti contains the Sanskrit words for both pouring ghee and offering libations in the hutta or the sacrificial fire, thus establishing the link to the sacred fire offering made to the Vedic gods. Okay, so this, uh, you know, um, being that I uh, recently s set up a mandir um, to uh, the goddess Durga, and I also have a Shiva author, um, this... Uh, I really wanted to, you know, understand more as, you know, as you start to do these rituals, you start to have questions about, well, why this, why that, right? And so naturally, um, Guy, right, um, wanted to understand more about why Guy is used. And first of all, you know, cows um, in Indian culture, in Vedic culture, uh, Hinduism, uh, the cow is representative of the mother uh, energy and cows are seen as sacred and are not killed and so um it's really important that uh ghee uh be used versus any sort of other like lamp oil um and i'll read a few things about why why that is so um this says uh and i'm on eshwar bhakti and it says ghee can improve our spiritual experience because ghee focuses on the tej tapva or the absolute fire principle and the vayu tapva or the absolute air principle and so you invoke air uh the air principle through mantra um and so uh let me see lost my place uh whereas on the other hand oil provides connection with the prithvi tapva or the absolute earth principle and uh up tapva or absolute water principle so it's really important to use ghee because you are really focusing on two main principles which is uh, tej tatva and vayu tatva so air and fire and those are the important ones uh when can you know when uh conducting puja or any sort of sacrificial sacrificial um fire and so there are also the three uh uh gunas right the three main principles or qualities and those are sattva um which is uh positive or peaceful tamas which is um uh, lethargic or night and rajas which is uh action oriented impulsive and so it says when we light a lamp we are looking for the enhancement of our spiritual dimension so when we add ghee to it it would improve our sattvic principle and when we use oil we are only actually increasing the the rajic principle um, and so that is why it's recommended to use ghee. Um, uh, there, there are a number of other reasons. I'll just read this last one. So our body has uh, seven main chakras. Their balance existence is essential in improving our well-being. And you can enhance their balance by including ghee in your pujas. If you use ghee, it can help with balancing manapura and anahata chakras. When we use oil, it helps in improving the health of the first two chakras only. So... Um, you know this is important because um obviously we want to uh be um invoking the the higher chakras right and not the lower ones and so ghee really assists with that and so thinking about this got me thinking about ritual right and i'll, I'll go back into this but often we are doing rituals or you know even puja or prayer or whatever it is whatever even you know across a multitude of traditions and something i've really learned um in exploring like what does it mean to um to really uh tap into the higher self right or the ultimate uh reality and so everything everything around us particularly in sacred texts is meant to remind us of who we are which is um, an aspect or a droplet of the supreme self, right? And so while we live here, we tend to forget that because the world hits us, right? The world tells us that we are individuals. The world tells us that um, we are all different and not the same in a multitude of ways. And that gives ground for hatred and prejudice and things of that nature. But also it just um, keeps us in this box of individualism and we're not able to really explore deeper, you know, who we are uh, in our truest essence. And so 
you know, I, I think about ritual and practicing these things that are not only meant to invoke God, because obviously, you know, the pouring of libations on the fire using ghee as this sophic element, um, which is also linked to the, 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 the cow, uh, the mother energy, um, it's not just important in that aspect to invoke God, but it's to invoke God in us. Right. And so, uh, because at, at our core, we are God. And so I'll move on. Um, so fire is the subtlest element. It's yet perceivable by the eyes In Vedic Hindu tradition. Fire is used as a medium to invoke the presence of God. And in Homa, the priest first meditates on the Lord and energizes the space this energy is transferred to the air element by the chanting of mantras, which in turn is energizing, <clears throat> sorry, which in turn energizes the fire in the homakunda, the sacred fire receptacle. Also, the fire is the medium through which the formless energy assumes the form and the matter with the form gets back to its original state of energy. So one of the examples, again, I'll, I'll go back because I, I did, you know, a lot of study in um, the Torah and Tanakh and, you know, the first thing this reminded me of was kind of like Moses in the burning bush, right? Like the way that um, uh, the Most High or God manifested, the I Am manifested was in this burning bush and gave um, the name, right? I Am. And so that in of itself, you know, is consciousness. And so with every tradition, right, fire uh, is used to invoke but it's also the form in which um, the divine is able to take while on earth um, let's move on so I'm saying all this to get to this piece about the sacred secretion or the chrism and if you haven't had a chance to read uh, George Carey's work um, he was a biochemist and really breaks down um, you know, how astrology is connected to cell salts and, you know, how there are a lot of pieces, if not all of it, <laughs> the Bible is allegorical and speaks to the functions of the human body. Um, and you know, all of that aligns astrologically. Santos Bonacci talks about it as well. Um, and if you're following this channel, I'm sure that you are following him as well, but, please read George Carey's work because it really breaks everything down. And, you know, it is a little uh, dense, but uh, I read definitely readable. So I pulled a, f a couple um, pieces from uh, his work, uh, God, man, the word made flesh. And so uh, he has the psychological statement and I'll just read it. The sacral region of a man's body near the base of the spinal column. Let me actually pull it up over here. Sorry. is a gland larger than a hen's egg of spongy character and into which is secreted from the blood a small amount of oil at that same time the the blood throws out refuse into the bladder exceedingly little has been known to physiologists about this gland or about the purpose of the secretion except that in elderly men it often becomes the seat of a disease called prosthesis and that in young men of dissolute habits the secretion becomes filthy this gland known in the east is kundalini okay so keep that in mind and in the new testament greek as the cardia it will be best to know it here by that name rather than the medical term the oil in it will elsewhere be identified with the greek psyche and so be referred to herein so i think they're going to say that they're just going to use um the card cardia instead of uh, kundalini the oil is uh subject to very very degrees of consistency from very thin volatile oil that promptly evaporates when exposed to the air to one having a good body a truly fixed oil that will form a permanent stain upon a piece of paper and the most healthy wise and vigorous men it is a fixed oil uh much like ghee huh and the average kind of man it to be met on the street is more or less it is more or less volatile in rakes, it is very malodorous and may contain puss. I don't know what rakes mean. I assume it's kind of a derogatory. Uh, so excuse me for that, but this is not my writing. Um, And then for its highest and purest condition, when it is a fixed oil, colorless, odorless, and tasteless or sweet, not really acid, nor really alkaline, we shall use the Greek term chrism. 
or for short by the root letter of the noun for oil and of the verb to oil ki in greek xpi it is a necessity of nature that the oil when purified or secreted in the cardia should usually make its way out again through the capillaries into the blood and so pass all over the body wherever the blood goes it is then one of the constituents of the blood or the blood of christ we'll keep reading because um this is where it gets interesting so uh again thinking about ritual thinking about um the sacrificial fire um this is this is all going to connect in a second so uh, it says primitive christians and the sin the scenes sorry fully realized and taught the great truth that christ was a substance an oil or ointment contained especially in the spinal cord consequently in all parts of the body as every nerve in the body is directly or indirectly connected with the wonderful river that flows out of eden the upper brain to water the garden okay the early christians knew that the scriptures whether written in ancient hebrew or the greek were allegories parables or fables based on the human body fearfully and wonderfully made these adepts knew that the secretion gray matter creative which issues secretes from the cerebrum was the source and cause of the physical expression called man and they knew that the river of jordan was symbolized in the spinal cord and that the dead sea was used to symbolize the sacred plexus at the base of the spinal column where the jordan spinal cord ends typifying the entrance of jordan into the dead sea so basically what it's saying is that everything that you have read biblically goes back to this process okay and so and that that's really the amazing thing for me right like um you know i've always understood um religion and spirituality spirituality to be kind of multi-layered right there's uh kind of you know the basics right like you learn the alphabet and the abcs first before you go to say calculus or you know <laughs> quantum physics um and so there's like these concepts these stories which you know according to george carey are completely allegorical because they're only referring back to the processes of the human body and when the human body is operating at its highest level that is when um we're able to achieve um the conditions and the environment necessary to transcend the physical body and tap into our god consciousness okay so uh keep reading the thick oily and salty substance composing the sacral plexus Cauda Echina, tail of the horse, may be likened unto crude petroleum, petra, mineral or salt and oleum, Latin for oil, and the thinner substance, oil or ointment in the spinal cord, may be compared with coal oil, and when this oil is carried up and crosses the Ida and Pingala, okay, and um, I have a, uh, a image here. And it, I don't I don't think it really names them, but um, the Ida and Pingala, right, um, are these two uh lines and then the shashumna runs uh through the middle okay um two fluid nerves that end in a cross in the medulla oblongata where it contacts the cerebellum okay golgotha the place of the skull so the cerebellum is literally at the base of the skull and if you've uh if you're you know familiar with the new testament you know that during um the the crucifixion of the christ in that story um that the place where he is crucified is called the place of the skull is called golgotha and so uh this fluid is refined as coal oil is refined to produce gasoline a higher rate of motion that causes the ascension of the airship okay so it's basically saying that through the very as this as this oil moves up right um from the mudalahara um it 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 goes through various transformations transitions in its quality um but it's got to start you know as this kind of fixed oil and as it moves up you know and finally uh reaches um gogata where it is crucified it is refined and um it produces something as uh you know ignitable as gasoline right and we know in our bodies 
we are water we have electricity right and so literally ignites a spark right and that's why i said it, it causes the ascension of the airship this is what to me ascension really means right and this is where we get into enlightenment and being able to um ignite that god consciousness when the oil ointment is crucified to crucify means to increase in power a thousand fold, not to kill. So I want to say this right now. Uh, biblical teachers, pastors who have been saying that the crucifixion was about the Christ being killed. First of all, had no understanding of what the Christ was, because here we see it is actually speaking to the chrism or the sacred oil. Right. That is is moving up and through the cerebrospinal fluid that comes back up right and i could break this down a little bit more um still learning about it but effectively like you have to keep that that pure because it it is really the seed and um if you keep it pure and you don't waste it through um uh you know through through sex uh, effectively um that it can be preserved right and so uh we'll keep reading um so crucify does not mean to kill it means to increase in power and it remains two and a half days the moon's period and a sign in the tomb which is the cerebellum right golgotha and on the third day it ascends to the pineal gland that connects the cerebellum with the optic thalamus the central eye and the throne of God that is the chamber over topped by the hollow hallowed caused by the curve of the cerebrum the most high of the body which is the temple of the living God the living vital substance which is a precipitation of the breath of life breathed into man therefore the holy whole ghost or breath and um I did a little bit of a cipher on the word holy and whole and zero and one uh, in my mother goddess energy videos you should watch. But yeah, this is like it's telling you about this very human process that happens when you're tapped in, when uh, you've chosen to um, try to preserve this this oil and um, that it can be crucified. Right literally in your body all of these are like functions within the body that are happening um and you know you can actually achieve a state of god consciousness on earth if you're tuned into this process so i'll talk a little bit more about uh george carey so this comes from the philosophical physiological statement which i read above but didn't include this part but this is very important the body is a lamp this oil is its illuminating substance okay without it there is no consciousness when it is completely exhausted consciousness ceases and disintegration takes place now we're living in a society where none of this knowledge is readily available it, it is just starting to come out now um george carey knew about it i mean you know you can see the picture I, I don't know exactly when the book came out i don't have it in front of me but i have i have his um zodiac and the cell salts book and i also have uh god man the word made flesh and i think i have another but that's besides the point this knowledge was out there right but our society has been so averse to these things right more spiritual things uh, and really taking the time to understand the body and i won't say it's all by fault right of of you know the greater humanity i'm just saying that um there have definitely been systems that have been designed to keep us sick to keep us um unwell to uh make that oil you know filthy as it mentioned um earlier and you know to have us addicted to have us uh having all sorts of sex and wasting the oil um and i'm not going to say that sex in of itself is like a bad thing i, I don't believe that you know um the <laughs> the supreme being created sex and quite literally you know the the shiva lingam is you know it, it, it is basically to me it is 
has a myriad of representations but you know it is atomic energy it is the big bang it is the cosmic orgasm right the the bursting forth of of creation that's how babies are made so um but when things are being done uh out of context and the sacred is um removed from it then you know something totally different is happening and so people aren't tapped into their bodies and are completely out of tune with um any of this information or this knowledge and so you know naturally because i know now um about uh the new testament and even the old testament and a lot of these um stories I totally look at Matthew 25 three through nine differently. Now, knowing this, right, uh, and I'll just read it, the scripture, um, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. OK, so think about think about the process that we just uncovered here. Right. So no oil. Right. Um, it says uh, in a healthy, wise and vigorous man or men mankind people it is a fixed oil an average kind of man it uh to be met on the street is more or less volatile and you know for folks who are really not tuned in it's mal maladorious and may contain puss and so there's there is no oil at that point and so it says that the wise um took their lamps and took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said unto the wise give us your oil for our lamps are gone out but the wise answered saying not so lest there not be enough for us and you but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves okay so you know um be wise <laughs> that that that's the that's the moral of this story um and so we'll just read more about the sacred secretion here um the sacred secretion also called chrism christ oil and this is just to reinforce this knowledge and the honey and milk is the title given to the body's natural spiritual rhythm during the monthly cycle when lunar energy empowers the star sign energy that clothed you at birth, the brain releases a brew of chemicals. The psychedelic concoction travels down the spine's 33 vertebrae before rising up again. Now, I want to point out again. So we, we know that there is energetically energy that does not have the collective, uh, uh, the, the good of the collective um, in mind, right? These parasitic energies right um and so when you see some of this information you may like it, uh, this stuff is so pervasive it's just like 33 and people associate that with like the illuminati right and i'm not saying that these entities these parasitic entities who are like perverting the information inverting it don't exist but i'm saying that the core of this knowledge is truth and it has been uh, by design hidden from the masses and it has also been uh, um, it has also been um, I don't know the word that I'm looking for um, but it's been disfigured right in a way to make people fearful of knowledge that could actually really enhance their life you know if you're the powers that be and you've been operating a very few of you um at the top and been able to run everything the media corporate entities you know the the mass wealth in in the world right um you don't want <laughs> billions of people walking around with this information you don't want billions of people having access to their god consciousness okay so I just wanted to mention that because I, I know the 33 came up, but, um, you know, and, and people may look at that and say, oh, Illuminati. But I'm trying to really like uh, let's do some unlearning and let's relearn and let's learn it from um, like from a good place so that we're not just, a, you know, walking around in fear. Fear is another thing that really um, can distort what is for us. And you may be so afraid to uh, 
to interact with this knowledge because of your preconceived notions or the fear about it that's been implanted in you that you're not able to go further with it. And so I just wanted to mention that. So it travels down the spines, 33 vertebrae before rising up again. The secretions um, increases its vibrational potency throughout the process, changing in and out of form. Finally, after being preserved in an alkaline body, the secretion is released, enhancing the senses of the individual and raising their conscious awareness. That's that God consciousness. Now, this is the true meaning behind the original story of Jesus, a fairy tale of the sun, not of the sun, who at 33 rose again and returned to the higher realms of being. Therefore, the sacred secretion is a spiritual journey. And um, you'll see there's a, a illustration here because even the story of Santa Claus and if you follow Santos Bonacci, this you already know about this, but these steps, right? The pineal gland um, secretes the milk. The pituitary Mary secretes the honey, both the same source um, from both from the same source, the claustrum or Santa Claus, right? Um the two sacred oils travel down into the solar plexus via the semilunar ganglion pneumogastric nerve. The psychophysical germ, the fruit of the tree of life, is born in the solar plexus or the manger. Okay. The ida and pingala, two nerve fluids where at the crossing of the medulla oblongata, or as we learned, um, the uh, um, Golgotha cerebellum the crucifixion takes place where it rests for two and a half days in the tomb uh, as the story goes the sacred oil returns after the crossing the crucifixion it enters the cerebellum Golgotha the place of the skull the fluid Christ is refined a thousand fold okay so don't let anybody else lie to you at this point okay I, I want to put this out here because I feel like this information at this point is everywhere, you know, on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, on Facebook. But if you haven't heard of it and I'm the first person telling you, do not be led astray anymore. OK, that is the true great delusion. OK, so how does this all connect? Because I really want to come full circle. Right. So the cave of Brahma is located in the center of the skull. All right. Um, with the thalamus glands as its wall, the hypothalamus as its floor, and the plexus of the third chorod ventricle as its roof. Within the cave is the spring of life, the aqueduct from which flows the cerebrospinal fluid upon which floats the hamsa swan like corpus callosum. Okay, so this is really beautiful. Like it, it, it just comes back to... um you know, the cave of Brahma, which I wanted to explore. And even deeper than that, right? We know that Brahma rides a swan. That is his vehicle, right? Hamsa, the white swan, is the Bahana vehicle of Lord Brahma and Goddess Sarasvati. In Hinduism, Lord Brahma performs the act of creation and Goddess Sarasvati is the goddess of art and learning. Hamsa is considered to have the capacity to separate milk from a mixture of milk and water, okay? So we just we just learned about um, those two. You just go back. So this the sacred secretion, um, it is, you know. Sorry, I'm I'm lost for a second. Oh, yeah. So in the pineal gland, uh, Joseph secretes the milk, the pituitary, Mary secretes the honey, and both come from the same source, which is the uh, claustrum. So, um, you know, when you think about this and in, in this particular, I don't even want to call it mythology because it's truth, but uh, in this, you know, particular um, uh, school of thought, Hinduism, um, so Hamsa is considered to have the capacity to separate milk from the mixture of uh, milk and water. And so this particular capacity of making fine distinctions, distinctions is an essential requisite of creation. Therefore, um, Lord Brahma is shown as riding on a swan. All right. So, um, again, like that's all I really have for you all today. But it's just it's like this information um, if you can really get it, it's life changing. Okay. Like absolutely life changing because you're now operating from a place of the truth, 
right? And so, you know, we tend to look down upon tradition and ritual and, you know, say like, oh, well, I- I'm spiritual. I don't need that. But again, remember, like everything, everything, the stories, the sacred texts, the rituals, all of it from, you know, and I, I, I tend to think, believe that the Vedas are you know the most accurate like it it is it is actually astounding that all of this knowledge has been preserved and captured and much of it has been destroyed but um just the the fact that all of these things are preserved in such a way where in 2023 right and we know time is an illusion, but I'm not going to get into that. In 2023, we have access to this knowledge from thousands of years ago, right? And so uh, I, I treat it as precious. And um, yeah, comment below. H- have you ever heard of the sacred secretion? What are you thinking about now? Um, I-, I really appreciate you all again um, and welcome new folks and everybody that is tuning in right now. Um uh, this is part of a series again called um, Over Troubled Water, where I'm exploring uh, deeper, hidden, esoteric, occult things. Occult just means hidden, esoteric just means hidden as well. So let's not be afraid, right, to approach this um, this information. And again, my grounding is in um, Advaita Vedanta, but also all the the Vedas um, in the Vedic tradition. And so. Um, yeah i really thank you uh so much gratitude to everybody who was able to tune in um and you know don't forget to like this video subscribe please comment um and boost me in the algorithm i guess i don't i don't really want to say that but um y'all know how this works so um thank you and if this is information worth sharing please do